This is the Hovding airbag helmet, which does not look like a helmet at all. It looks like one of those travel pillows you wear around your neck, but it monitors your movements at over 200 times per second with gyroscopes and accelerometers. And if it detects a crash, it explodes around your head like a marshmallow. And no, this is not some fly-by-night crowdfunded disaster like the Revo. Over 300,000 of these Hovdings were sold between 2011 and 2023, until it was banned, pushing the company into bankruptcy. Ah! Now, as a result of that ban, Hovding as a company went bankrupt. And while you might be able to guess why the ban occurred, those sales figures are also true. And many independent tests showed that the Hovding was safer than traditional bicycle helmets, although that doesn't tell the full story. And also, why would anybody buy a 300 euro bicycle helmet that relies on an algorithm to detect a crash? And I've been wondering for over 10 years, what would it actually feel like to crash in this thing? I'm Seth from Burn Peak. I've crashed in a lot of helmets, but never a Hovding. Today, that's gonna change. Let's start by taking a look at this thing, which as I said, looks more like a neck pillow than it does a helmet. The black box is kind of where all the magic happens. And just like the black box on an airplane, it records crash data. This is also where the USB-C charge port is housed. Now to use the Hovding, you fasten it around your neck like so. You zip it up, then you fasten this clasp. Now that tone means it ran a diagnostic and that it was successful. The battery is charged, the sensors are working, and most importantly, this will inflate into a marshmallow if it detects a crash. Now, truth be told, they warn you to leave this unclasped when you're off the bike for reasons that will become clear soon. Now, like so many products these days, I just assumed that I would need an app to make it work. And so I went to Walmart and purchased a $30 Android phone and downloaded the last working version of the app so I could sideload it. As it turns out, nobody's been paying the bill on the server, and so you still can't log in, but that $30 phone was pretty impressive. Nevertheless, the hub thing still works as long as you get that chime after the diagnostic. But if the app were to work, it was pretty useful. You could load emergency contacts into it so that if you got into a crash, they were automatically notified. That's pretty cool. Now, as you ride, this little black box monitors your movements at over 200 times per second. And if it detects what it thinks is a crash, a charge of helium makes this airbag inflate over your head. And the way it inflates is pretty insane. It actually goes over your head and partially in front of it, protecting more of your head than most normal helmets would. And that loud boom it makes, that's the sound of 300 euros because when your hovding goes off, you have to buy a new one. Oh boy. Now, like most legitimate helmet manufacturers, Hovding did offer crash replacement, and so you could repurchase it at a discount. But now that we kind of understand what the Hovding is and what it does, we should talk about why. Why on earth would anyone engineer a helmet that only works if it senses you crashing? Well, it makes a little bit more sense if we rewind 20 years back to 2005. This was only a few years after they started requiring helmets in the Tour de France. At the time, bicycle helmets were annoying and distracting. Nobody wanted to wear them. Many of us, including myself, were unwilling to give up that carefree wind in your hair experience we had as kids. And we weren't alone. Two industrial design students at Lund University in Sweden proposed the idea of an invisible helmet in their master's thesis project, citing comfort as the main benefit. Anna Haupt and Therese Alstein believed so strongly in their idea, they proceeded to develop a working prototype of an airbag helmet, releasing the first production Hovding in 2011. Now in Sweden at the time, local laws would soon require helmet use on children. Anna and Therese correctly predicted in their thesis that adults would soon follow the same path. And so given the reality at the time, it's easier to understand why the most comfortable helmet ever made could become a viable product. And it was. By the 2020s, Hovding had sold over 300,000 helmets to customers in more than 15 countries. And in its home country of Sweden, many style conscious users loved its low key aesthetic. A lot of you remember Hovding's marketing, which looked a lot like a fashion show. They even showed the helmet in its deployed state with remarkably composed models standing there nonchalantly after an ear ringing helium charge just saved them from eating pavement. But it worked and customers tended to be 
satisfied. Many users appreciated the lack of helmet hair and even helmet pimples that you would get on your temples. They also appreciated the portability. We just recently reviewed some folding helmets and actually folded up. This is smaller than most of those are. And much like big expensive headphones, Hovding could have been seen as a status symbol in urban markets. Hovding even sold covers for it so you can match it to your clothing. It could also keep you warm, kind of like a scarf, and it was no problem to wear a little winter hat with it, but the benefits extended way beyond user preference. A frequently cited study at Stanford University suggested Hovding could provide up to eight times better protection than traditional helmets, assuming it deployed fully. And a test by a Swedish insurance company found that Hovding provided three times better shock absorption than traditional helmets. And Hovding's position around the neck limited head movements and reduced rotational forces during an accident. But also thousands of crashes actually occurred and users often shared their experiences on the internet. One cyclist in Stockholm was hit from behind by a car at 15 kilometers per hour and it pushed his wheels into a tram track, catapulting him off the bike onto the asphalt. The rider recalls coming to on the asphalt with quote, air seeping out from the shiny white airbag that has inflated around my head. The crowd of onlookers was whispering, so it works. Now the cyclist instinctively broke the fall with his hands while his hovding kept his head off the ground. In his words, on this particular occasion, I think I would have been okay even without a helmet, but there's no real way of knowing. Other user accounts are more clear cut. One rider reports three crashes wearing a hovding within 18 months, which he surely replaced in between. Queen. The first was a solo crash where the rider skidded on wet leaves and the other two were similar incidents where he was struck by inattentive drivers. In all three cases, the hovding worked. He stated that the first two accidents would have definitely resulted in concussion and maybe something even worse if I hadn't worn my hovding. This user is convinced that hovding saved him from serious injury. But one of these accounts is actually from a trauma surgeon who's also an avid cyclist. He was unfortunate enough to experience two crashes one with a standard helmet and one with a hovding. His regular foam helmet, in his words, likely saved my noggin, but he describes the hovding's protection as an order of magnitude better. In his hovding crash, the airbag not only absorbed the impact more effectively, it also provided coverage beyond a normal helmet, in his words, cushioning your cranium, plus face and neck protection that a traditional helmet does not offer. He was lucky enough to walk away without serious injury in both cases, but the difference in impact force and head protection was stark. Based on personal experience and his medical expertise treating trauma, he strongly prefers the Hovding for superior head protection. In summary, the airbag helmet greatly reduced the force to his head and protected areas that would otherwise be vulnerable. Now, Sweden might be the only country known worldwide for safety. The Swedes are excellent at safety. I own a mattress for my son's crib that you can breathe into face down. So based on these user accounts, it appears that the Hovding was yet another product coming from a culture that places a high value on human life. Now, I live in America and we view safety a very different way. At least, it might seem that way on the surface, yet our government agency, the Consumer Product Safety Commission, never allowed the Hovding to be sold in the United States. In fact, Hovding petitioned the CPSC as late as 2018 for a special exemption which was ultimately denied. The CPSC requires tests that impact helmets with anvil shapes, and they place an emphasis on positional stability when strapped to a head form. By contrast, in the European Union, the Hovding is considered, quote, the equivalent of a bicycle helmet and meets personal protective equipment requirements. So in other words, they were able to prove that it was safe without subjecting it to the same exact criteria as standard bicycle helmets helmets. But different organizations came to different conclusions about the efficacy of the Hovding airbag helmet. In 2014, a French consumer advocacy magazine published a highly critical report saying Hovding failed certain safety tests. They claimed that in their laboratory drop tests against a hard, narrow surface, the Hovding didn't perform as well as a normal helmet, essentially bottoming out. That's a lot like the anvil-shaped impact that the CPSC requires. But worse yet, tests like these assumed that the Hovding deployed in the first place, imagine you're riding down the road and a vehicle or another cyclist impacts you from the side by surprise. There's no way for the helmet to sense you going down before you actually get impacted. And this is indeed one of the faults of the Hovding airbag helmet. Just don't get, uh! 
And as it turns out, this wouldn't have been such a strange thing to worry about. By 2023, the Swedish Consumer Agency had recorded 27 instances where the Hovding failed to deploy, resulting in head injuries for cyclists. The company then asserted that these failures were extremely rare, especially when you compare it to the 300,000 units that were sold. And this may be true. It could also be mathematically true that Hovding's mostly stellar lab results outweighed the instances where it didn't deploy. But that's kind of an unsavory thought. Mathematically true or not, failing to deploy was not the Hovding's only issue. Now it's true that the company took pretty reasonable precautions to avoid accidental discharges, like this user guide. They make it clear that you should be on your bike before you engage your hovding, and that you should disengage your hovding before getting off the bike. But with a normal helmet, the order of operations isn't even on your radar. You might complete a visit to the grocery store without even remembering that your helmet is on. And so despite these instructions, the internet is chock full of accounts from users who trigger the airbag by say, dismounting to carry the bike over something, or even quickly picking up groceries to load them onto their bike. You may lean down and boom, that's the ear ringing sound of $300. But these accidental deployments are mostly humorous. The same is not true when it fails to deploy. A failure to deploy is something else altogether, and that was the breaking point for the Swedish Consumer Agency. On November 1st, 2023, a temporary sales freeze was imposed on the Hovding 3, pending an investigation. But that wasn't actually a huge surprise, as it came on the tail of a scandal. In late 2022, Swedish media had obtained a secret recording from within Hovding, allegedly indicating the company was aware of a design flaw in the product. This made it seem like Hovding might have knowingly put users at risk. There are always two sides to every story, but this was a bad look, and it was enough for the Swedish consumer agency to act decisively. On December 15th, 2023, less than a month after the temporary ban, the agency escalated this to a recall, announcing that all Hovding 3s should be pulled from the market and that consumers should turn in their Hovdings. The next week was tumultuous to say the least, with the court even agreeing at one point to pause the ban, but the damage was done. On December 22nd, 2023, right at the end of the holiday shopping season and in the throes of the bike apocalypse, Hovding announced that it was closing for good. In the bankruptcy statement, they explained that the agency's recall order caused an enormous loss of confidence and a halt of sales, which left no basis for continuing the company. I can't help but wonder if this was all a travesty. And that's not to minimize the very real suffering incurred by the 27 cyclists whose airbags failed to deploy or the sketchy recording from inside the company. It's just that something about this technology, maybe the marshmallow part, made it really effective in certain scenarios. I personally take no joy in seeing this technology shelved completely, and I'm not alone. After the bankruptcy, there were thousands of Hovding users still using their helmets without support from the company, without a working app. But users have adopted other apps to detect crashes and store emergency contacts. And they have covers for Hovding on Etsy. And users have banded together to keep their Hovdings functional. On a subreddit called R Bicycling, one thread is titled, How to Keep Hovding Going After the Bankruptcy in 2024. The OP generously provides links to firmware updates and includes troubleshooting steps. But the top comment is, never in my 15 years of cycling have I needed to consider whether my helmet might require the manufacturer to keep their online infrastructure running. Every time electronics are added to something that historically didn't need them, people bring up that same point and they're kind of right time and time again. But one thing is true. Some people are so reluctant to wear a helmet that they would rather spend $300 on an electronic marshmallow. If it's any consolation to Anna and Therese, they probably convinced some number of unwilling people to wear a helmet, sort of. But I think we've talked about the Hovding all we can. It's time to see if it works. So there was that one story about a Reddit user who leaned down kind of aggressively to pick up groceries and load them into their bike, and it went off. I'm gonna lift up this child to put him into the baby seat. We're gonna see if it goes off. That means it's ready to go. <gasps> okay, 
let's ramp it up a little bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do is kind of a little bit execution style. I'm just gonna kneel here. Like I said, I don't know if this works, so the anticipation is killing me. We've got the tone, we've got the green light. All right, Dan. All right, you ready? Just do it. One. Just don't go. It didn't go off. Maybe it doesn't work. I guess try again. Ready again? I'm ready. All right. One, two. It works. Holy dog crap. This thing's around my neck really tight and I hear this hissing sound and Dan nailed me with that basketball. That hurt. So you can see nothing. <laughs> it's covering all my field of vision, but that's kind of the advantage over a normal helmet. It covers the front of you. It goes around the sides. It just envelops your head in a Swedish marshmallow. Now in a moment, we're actually going to stage a crash with this Hovding right here, but reflecting on our staged soccer ball crash, uh, that was pretty incredible. It was something like a religious experience. I don't know if it was the Hovding exploding around my head or a soccer ball hitting me in the back of the neck with some force. Once the Hovding was inflated, I kind of felt invincible. I mean, it's around your head so tight and you're so confined, but just everywhere is just cushion. It's like being in bed wrapped in covers or something like that. I can absolutely see why Hovding might be more effective than a normal helmet, assuming it deploys and wraps around your head as it should. Now, there's an internet video of a woman approaching a pole and purposely crashing into it such that her Hovding goes off. Now, I'm human, and so I find this video to be one of the most hilarious things on the entirety of the internet. First of all, because she's purposely crashing into a pole, and second of all, because she seemingly doesn't realize that the Hovding protects only your head and not your knees or your abdomen. Speaking from experience, you rarely ever hit your head. For every one time you hit your head, you bang up your knee or your shin or your shoulder like 20 times. But nevertheless, she stays confident and she slays the objective, crashing into the pole with her Hovding deploying. That is gonna be a good guide for what we're about to do. how tight it is around my neck for the second time. Oof. All right, let me put on a normal helmet and give you my thoughts. Now first, let me say if you've ever experienced a hovding exploding around your head, it's something like a spiritual experience. It happens so fast, you don't even realize it's happening until it's already happened. And I think the intensity of the experience is what made so many of Hovding's customers into true believers, much like those who bared witness to a miracle. I really do believe that Hovding could be more effective than a normal helmet, assuming it triggers as it should and envelops your head before you crash. We know that NASA uses airbags to cushion Mars landers, and we know how effective normal automotive airbags are. But it also makes sense why the downsides were so concerning, especially as Hovding's sales outputs doubled near the end of its existence. Say what you will about Hovding being for people who don't like to wear helmets, but at the beginning, it was likely for enthusiasts that understood the technology and knew what they were getting themselves into. As it became more mainstream, it fell into the hands of people who just expect helmets to work and that was a recipe for disaster. But if you've experienced the Hovding going off on your head, especially if you have twice like I have, I wanna hear from you in the comments. Nevertheless, I went into my initial research thinking this was a pretty dumb idea, and I came away having kind of a different belief, having experienced it explode around my head perfectly. But I wanna know what you think, especially if you, like me, have experienced the thing exploding around your head. I hope you learned something today, and if you didn't, I hope you at least found it entertaining, and if you did, check out my Bicycle Spotlight playlist with more videos just like this one. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.